Hello! Welcome to the Anatomy of Knitting episode 92. My name is Erin and I'm going to be your host. Today is February 18th, uh, 2016. I am coming to you from a very cold uh, Cork, Ireland. <laughs> uh, we're 30 degrees Fahrenheit today. Um, I still think in Fahrenheit even though I've been here for almost two years. Just haven't uh, just haven't converted my brain to the uh, Celsius uh, scale. So, sir, psh, come on. Sorry, Ari was uh, moving the laptop. So, uh, I have a little bit of knitting to talk to you about. Um, not a whole heck of a lot, sadly. And then I have some quilting, and I think that'll be it. Uh, chances are I won't record, well, maybe I'll record next week. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, Two weeks from today, I leave to go to London. It's my um, annual birthday trip, which I really like. <coughs> uh, there's a knitting and stitching show that's at the Olympia Center in London, which is in Kensington, or around Kensington, I believe. Um, so I am going to London in a week, uh, two weeks. And um, yeah, so I will check out the knitting and stitching show. And report back. I'll probably do what I did when I uh, was there last year and recorded while I was there. Um, so I will give you a report from the Knitting and Stitching show. If I do that, um, then I get, well, there's 20, yeah, because it'll be in March when I go. So, um, well, we'll figure out the recording schedule later. <laughs> uh, the Week in Review. Potty training is still kind of going on. Um, I kind of figured I would do a Malcolm-led way um, of potty training, um, <clears throat> which means we take it one day at a time, and um, I kind of just ask him what he wants to do. Um, you know, so he wakes up, uh, we go to the potty, um, and he consistently uses the potty in the morning. That hasn't been a problem. Uh, but then I ask him, okay, well, do you want to wear underpants today or do you want to wear, um, you know, a diaper? And, uh, he's, he's been fairly consistently requesting underpants. Um, but he's not doing so great when we get downstairs. He still isn't really recognizing that his body, uh, needs to use the, the, the toilet, um, has a lot of accidents and, um, there was one day where we where we sat here and um, they've been really into Mighty Machines, which is a, a thing that we found on Netflix. It's a Canadian show that came out and um, they just profile really big uh, machines <laughs> is the best way that I can describe it. The, uh, they, they like to watch uh, one that's about a quarry um, where there's this, there's this big mining dump truck and, and just goes over the machinery of the dump truck and the and the big front loader that fills the dump truck and, um, you know, just everything associated with that. <clears throat> and, uh, so we were watching that and then, um, afterwards it had been a good, a good three hours since he had last, um, peed. And so, um, I said, okay, Malcolm, you know, uh, now's the time to, to empty your bladder. So let's, before lunch, let's go to the potty and, and, and go pee. And he just flat out refused to go on the potty. So I said, well, here's your choice. You can choose either to use the potty or you can be put in a diaper. Um, it's your choice. Um, if you're wearing underpants, you have to sit on the potty when mommy asks you. That's the, that's the rule. Um, so he ended up deciding that he was going to wear a diaper for the rest of the day. So again, just one day at a time. He'll get it um, eventually. Everybody does. <laughs> Uh, we do have a little bit of a deadline now. Um, in September, we have um, uh, booked a vacation. We are going to go um, on a Disney cruise and to use their, their kids club that's there, we have to make sure that they're potty trained. So um, yeah, that's the, that's our deadline is September. So we have, let's see, seven months, which is I think pretty, a good, a good chunk of time. Um, Nathaniel's actually starting to, um, sit on the potty, um, when Malcolm's on the potty, but he's, he's clothed when he sits on the potty. So, um, baby steps, 
and uh, it's a it's a process you know I guess not everybody gets it in a week or a day and and I'm just trying to be gentle and and go the way that we we go um excuse me today was uh, today's a school day they went to the crush and um, they've just it's just been really hard dropping them off um, because they're having a lot of separation anxiety so just trying to work through that has has been difficult. My uh, <clears throat> my hack of saying, oh well, you know, if you want to be an astronaut, you got to go to school. It doesn't seem to work anymore. He just he just M Malcolm says, but I'm gonna miss you. And I say, well, I'm gonna miss you too. But you can have fun, and you're always so happy when I pick you up, and you know, all that good stuff. So oh, we shall see how it goes here. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> the, uh, what I have to show you, I don't think I still have the photo up. Um, knitting wise, I have uh, mainly just been knitting on the, come on, come on. Well, I can't make my little, I can't make the, 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 uh, uh, the search box in the bottom thing go away. So there is the leaving cowl, which is what I'm knitting on. I am knitting this out of Shibui Dune. Um, and I don't think I have a tag that's easily accessible. It is camel silk. Oh goodness. It's camel silk and something else. Maybe camel silk. And I'm going to look it up on Ravelry for you. Of course, I make a mistake. It is 50% alpaca, 25% camel, and 25% silk. And this is what I have. I, um... So the, the yarn was given to me by a friend for knitting a hat for her husband for Christmas. There we go. That's a beautiful picture. So you can see I was uh, down here when I last talked to you all that had just completed the seed stitch border and I was ready to start the lace. I have uh, knit an entire one uh, skein of the dune. Um, the instructions um, tell you to do... Let's see how many repeats uh, you do to the chart twice um, and uh, and then repeat it uh, half more times um, I have done the complete chart um, I'm I think I'm two rows away from completing uh, re finishing it a third time so I'm making my cowl a little bit longer because I have the yarn so there is the amount of yarn that I have left uh, I'm debating about adding another repeat um, before starting the, the seed stitch. I still have to do half of the chart. I guess I'll do half the ch half of the chart, um, assess how much yarn I have left, and then decide whether or not I'm going to, um, you know, when I need to start the seed stitch. So that'll be my plan. Uh, my guess is that I will probably have this finished by next week. And... Uh, yeah, that's, that's the extent of my knitting. I haven't done a whole heck of a lot of knitting. Um, what I have been doing is a fair amount of quilting, and um, that's a type of stitching, so I figured I would show you um, the two things that I've mainly been working on. Um, actually, yeah, I'll just talk about two of them. Uh, the first thing is a finished object. Um, so I'm a member of the Southern Branch of the Irish Patchwork Society. Um, and I joined the committee, which is their, like, uh, board of directors or, you know, just like um, there's a president, vice president kind of thing back in the States. But here it's it's a, a chair or, or a committee and, um, you know, there's a chair and, and uh, the position that I have is the um, editorial representative and the public relations officer. Um, last year for one of our meetings, we had a, a speaker drop out. And um, so I made a suggestion why don't you have like a brainstorming session to determine like what 
what the group wants to do for the year. Um, and so one of the things that came out of it was that they wanted to do a block of the month <clears throat> and I volunteered to run that. So it ran from uh, February until February and uh, I showed them the finished quilt and made them um, made a presentation for it and all that good stuff. So if you want the directions, it's all posted to the website. You just go to IPS, uh, yeah, www.ipscork.com. Um, there's, <clears throat> excuse me, a tab along the top and there's a, there's a block of the month tab. So you can find that there. This is a very beginner friendly if you're new to patchworking. So, um, I can only kind of show it to you half of it at a time, but I can't really see you as I show it to you. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so this, uh, I, when I was in the States last, I, um, found this fat eighth bundle. It's, uh, the, the fabric line is from Moda Fabrics. It's Miss Kate and, uh, it's designed by Bonnie and Camille. Um, and so I used, I used that fat eighth collection, um, to design all the blocks and these are all pretty friend, beginner friendly blocks. Let's see, we'll start. Um, I decided to arrange mine in the monthly order. So we have the rail fence, which is here. And then in the middle is the churn dash or monkey wrench and then over here is the snail trail which i think is pretty fun after that <clears throat> over on this side um this red and, and aqua one is the um rolling stone then the one in the middle where my head is is the x plus and this is the bear paw and then this one over here is the rectangle or half half rectangle triangle star and then a spools block and then one of my favorites a dresden plate and then we ended it with the inverted star which makes those, you know, when it's made out of a bunch of half square triangles and you make a, a an inverted uh, sawtooth star. And then the Flying Dutchman is in the middle. And the Wheel of Fortune block. That's what the, that's the one that we ended up with last. And you can see my quilting design that I used on it. Um, I've heard to, I've heard it referred to as flower power, um, but it's, it's a, an elongated spiral and then you come out of the spiral by making uh, those petals. I also did these little square and a square cornerstones just to kind of make it look beautiful. Um, and then the backing fabric is just a print from the that line, Miss Kate. And um, I found some uh, uh, bamboo uh, batting or wadding as they call it here uh, to put in the center. I bought that uh, so we have shops that come to um, our meetings and I bought it from uh, one of the shops and uh, when I bought it I thought oh it, it felt really it felt really squeaky as I was uh, folding it up to transport it home and I thought oh gosh this is just gonna feel awful when it's um, when I have it in the quilt but the quilt is awesome I just love the I love the hand of that bamboo, bamboo batting it's it's fantastic um, and it's not squeaky at all. So that is a quilt I designed. And then the other thing I'm going to show you, um, is going to be, they're going to be some pictures. It's a, a quilt top. Um, it's, uh, last year. So I set out, let me start from the beginning. I set out, uh, goals to work on, uh, pretty much every year. Um, I used to do that consistently with my knitting, but, uh, since we've moved here, I haven't really done it with my knitting. I've done it with my sewing. Um, and one of my goals last year was to, uh, work with shapes that were other, were, that weren't squares or rectangles. So, um, triangles and diamonds and <clears throat> just other things like that. So, uh, I found this design called the Aviatrix Medallion, which I think I've shown a uh, part of it to you. Um, 
but I completed the quilt top. And um, I'm going to put a, a, a picture up here. Um, and I, I've completed the top and it's, it's fantastic. And I need to uh, find some backing fabric and some binding and some uh, uh, wadding for the center and uh, start quilting that bad boy. It's 80 by 80 inches. It's a design by Elizabeth Hartman. And I used a uh, fat quarter bundle. I used the colors and everything that the pattern called for because I just I just thought it was fit. so fantastic looking. Um, <clears throat> it's a, it, I want to say it's the Kona Cotton Elizabeth Hartman designer palette. She's got a couple of, of solid uh, Kona Cotton fat quarter packs, um, but I think this is just the Elizabeth Hartman one. There's like a summer one and a, a winter one, um, but it's it's neither one of those. Although you could use those to make the the quilt, it it'll just uh, obviously look a little different. Um, so I worked with um, diamonds and made a lone star for the center. I worked with um, not parallelograms, a trapezoid to make a butterfly block border. I you I did the X plus block. I did uh, some low, uh, some log cabin blocks, and yeah, I think that's I think that's about about it. Um, you'll see, you'll see it. It's just, it's it's stunning, and it's it's exciting, and and I can't wait to finish it up and show everybody because I'm really proud of it. It's not perfect by any means, but um, I'm really pleased with with how I was able to to make this. Um, so yeah, those are the quilting things that I've been doing. And um, I think that's pretty much it. It's gonna be a short show. Um, haven't really done a whole a whole lot of knitting or um, spinning. I think when I finish this, um, I'm gonna pick up my spinning wheel. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a, uh, a Hanson mini spinner. So, you know, picking it up isn't all that, isn't all that hard. <laughs> um, and I was looking, I have all my fleeces stored in my closet. I was thinking of doing um, the Cormo fleece that I have. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, so Ari wants to say goodbye. <laughs> um, let's see. If you are, uh, I'm a Craftsy affiliate. So if you are going to go buy a Craftsy class, um, there's sales all the time. Please do me a favor and go to the, uh, the website, theanatomyofknitting.com. And uh, on that side of the sidebar, um, you'll see an ad for Craftsy. Go ahead and click on that. They just track uh, where people come from. And uh, if you buy a class, um, they give me a little bit of money for the advertising of the uh, banner that I have on the website. So it helps to uh, support just the uh, hosting fees of the podcast. That's all I use it for. And um, yeah, so if you please do that if you have a moment. And... We shall see how things uh, how things go in the next week. Uh, I believe I will be recording next week. I can't think of anything um, that would stop me. Um, we are getting our letter today from the government, but if I apply for that, um, because I have because we have to apply for um, the letter. Bef uh, things are set up weird here. Um, our GNIB cards that we have to have um, that make traveling a little bit easier. Um, ours is currently, uh, we, we don't currently have one. We have a stamp in our passport that allows us to stay here um, while we were waiting for that letter to come in. Well, the letter is going to be arriving apparently sometime today. Um, but if we go to apply for our cards, uh, I won't have my card in time because uh, we have to wait a week to go pick it up. So I'd have to pick it up the day that I leave and my airplane leaves at 1030. Um, and the uh, office doesn't open until 9.30. So I won't be going <laughs> until after we get back. So I, I should be recording uh, for the next two weeks. Next week's will be here. The week after we'll be in London. And yeah, I think that's, I think that's everything. Um, so if you have any suggestions of things I should see in London, this is my fifth or sixth trip there. Um, I love London. I love the city. I love riding the tube. Um, I'm planning to go to Harrods just because I love Harrods and, um, 
it's, there's a Disney store there that's the closest to where I'll be staying um, because I need to go to a Disney store for the boys <laughs> uh, to get them some Nemo things. Um, so if you have any suggestions, oh, excuse me, of things I should go see, please let me know. Please uh, post that on the Ravelry board or send me an email. Uh, the email address for the podcast is theanatomyofknitting.com and um, I will I will go. So <laughs> if there's anything you'd like me to go record things of in London and uh, show them on the podcast, again, let me know and I will go do that. So I shall talk to you all next week and uh, have, a, have a good week. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>